my 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 finish has character uniform then i went to 1500 grit then i went to 2000 grit uh it's recommended that you apply the polish to the rag tape down the guitar with mineral spirits in between uh each application and i am pretty happy with them let's put this thing together this week on learning <laughs> I am Spencer Dobson. Thanks for watching Learning Curve. If this is your first episode, first of all, I appreciate you hanging out. Uh, what I'm doing is putting together a Stumac Telecaster kit. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of it right now. I am by no means a master luthier. Uh, I maybe know a little more than you. I maybe know a little less than you. Um, but if you're a guitar player and if you're a guitar tinkerer like I am, and you've thought to yourself, maybe it'd be cool to build a kit, well, you can watch these and see how it goes, right? You can see what some of the hangups are, what some of the problems you have to figure out are, what some of the easy stuff is. You can figure out if this is something you find intimidating, if this is something that looks like it's right up your alley, if this is something that looks like it might be a little bit over your head, or, or what you need to brush up on before you dig in. So, uh, so if you go back and watch the other stuff, I've I've finished the guitar so far. I've uh, I've cleaned the the uh, I've cleaned the lacquer off the neck, uh, off the fr I've cleaned the lacquer off the frets. I've installed the tuning pegs. I've spray painted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Go back and, and see how we got to where we're at. Uh, there's a whole bunch of videos about it. There's a link. So this week, what I'm going to do is put the neck on and install the hardware. Okay, first things first, and I'm not trying to be difficult here, and I'm not trying to be cute, but the directions did not tell you to put the ground wire from the control plate to under the bridge. There's a little hole in the body. There's a wire that runs out. That's for the ground. And the reason um, I'm making a big deal out of this is because if you do not ground the bridge, the guitar doesn't work. Uh, I don't know if it's dangerous or not. I've never checked, but you're not going to get noise out of it. So the first thing you need to do, I know it's not in the directions, but run the ground wire from your ground to this little hole under the bridge. Now you've grounded the bridge. No big deal. It's just the guitar doesn't work without it. So do it. Okay, now it's time to install the pickup into the bridge. Um, if you've never installed a, a pickup before, it's a little bit of a balancing act. By the way, if you have the magical trick that makes this super quick and easy, please share it with me um, because I've not found a way to not make this a little bit difficult. Basically, pickups are suspended uh, on these screws and there's a spring that creates tension between uh, the pickup and the... Uh, and, and whatever's holding the, the pickup in place, and that's how it uh, stays suspended. So what you need to do is thread uh, the screw through, uh, in this case, the bridge, and then you need to slide that spring in, and then you need to attach, thread the screw through another hole in the pickup. Now on the first one, it's always super easy, but there's always another screw, in this case, two more screws, and you have to figure out how to get the spring in without tightening the thing up too much and everything's moving and and you have to line the pickup up with the hole in the bridge it's a carnival game and it's maddening and all i can say is be patient take your time i promise it's doable it's just really you know it is what it is man Also, once you have the pickup mounted, don't forget to put the wires 
from the pickup through the little hole that you put your ground wire through that leads to the control cavity because you're going to later need to hook, uh, hook the wires up to the volume knob, but we're not going to do that right now. This is my favorite thing about kits. Uh, they drill the holes for the bridge for you, so you don't have to figure it out. I find drilling holes the, the most nerve wracking part. Um, I'm always a little bit off, so uh, whenever I install a bridge, um, it's always a bit of a struggle. So to not have to figure any of that stuff out um, makes me very, very, very happy. And, and doing this is really simple. It's just four screws. Obviously take your time. Obviously don't force anything. Um, apply steady pressure. Do not strip the screws. It's a Phillips screwdriver. It, you've used one and you've stripped a screw before. So take your time and don't strip the screws. Um, but this is a piece of cake. Just screw it into where the four holes are. Okay, the initial plan was I was gonna put on the, the pick guard that came with the Telecaster, that came with the kit, um, and put in the pickup that came with the kit, and then you would be able to hear the original, the way this guitar was designed to sound. And then I was gonna swap it out uh, with the pick guard that I wanted to put on it and the pickup that I wanted to put on it because it's routed to have a humbucker on the neck. Um, and then I would just do both of those builds. But as I keep learning, pick guards are not all the same. And um, these two pick guards did not match up perfectly. And I did not want to drill an extra hole in my guitar body uh, just to have a pick guard on for two seconds to show you what it looks like. You've seen a, a blackface telly before. So I decided to skip that step altogether. If you were wondering what a, the, the, the neck telly pickup for a Stumac kit guitar sounds like, you're going to have to go someplace else. I'm terribly sorry. I'm sure somehow you will get through this. We'll get through it together, man. So uh, the pick guard I went with was a uh, vintage, what's it called? An aged white humbucker telly pickup from Guitar Fetish. It was like 13, 14 bucks. Then I got a Guitar Madness Chrome wide range style El Nico 5 pickup. Uh, like I said, from Guitar Madness on eBay. Um, the pickup fit really snugly into the, um, into the pick guard. You have to do the whole mounting thing again. It's a little easier on the neck, on the neck than the bridge because there's only two screws, but it's still this weird circus game balancing act thing. So I got the pickup installed. The pickup fits really snugly into the routing for the pickup. Like I can have everything lined up the way it's going to be when the guitar is functional. Uh, and what this allows me to do is figure out where to put the marks so that I can drill the holes for the pick guard. So once the, 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 the pick guard is lined up with the neck and the pickups where it's supposed to be, uh, you take a magic marker, you, uh, make little marks in all the holes on the pick guard. Then you take the pick guard off. Uh, once again, go slow, keep it 90 degrees, take your time, be patient. Don't forget you can, re you can reverse the drill so you don't have to just yank it out of the hole. That's going to cause you a lot of damage. Um, then you put the pick guard back on. Uh, it is recommended that you wax the screws because it makes them go into wood easier. The wax acts like kind of a lubricant, so I just use candle wax for that. And then bada boom, bada bing, uh, now you've got your pick guard. So I have a theory. I don't know if I'm right. Before I finished the body in the neck, there was a little bit of wiggle to the neck. Right in. Yeah, it's got a little bit of give. But then I put several coats of lacquer on both the body. And I didn't, I didn't coat the pocket. But once I had the lacquer on everything, the neck pocket was really snug. I mean, it came in and out very, very easily but there was no wiggle room to it whatsoever. So I think that uh, when you get a kit, um, I guess if you're worried that there's a little give in the neck, it, it seems like finishing it really takes care of all that extra room. Um, now, granted, this is just my experience with this one and I could be, something else could have happened, but that seems like, I know, I know the bodies on these guitars are made specifically for the necks of these guitars and vice versa. And Stumac's been doing this a long time and they 
I think, know how things, you know, come out in the end. So it seems like they compensated for the fact that the lacquer is going to add a couple of micrometers uh, to the width of the neck, of to the neck heel, and um, and gave you room for that to happen. Anyway, the neck fits perfect. Okay, to hold the neck in place, you're going to need a clamp. Now, in the directions, they use a C clamp, and they recommend finding like a flat piece of wood to put in between the metal disc on the clamp, and the and the body and the fretboard. On each, you know, each of the contact points of the clamp, so that you don't damage your your guitar. But I have this guy and this guy has got these little rubber pads so they're firm and they hold tight but they don't damage the surface that you're working on so uh this is called a quick grip mini bar clamp i i don't know where i got it but uh, it does a great job and it doesn't screw up the neck or the frets or anything like that when you use it for this kind of work. So if you don't have one, maybe this is the route for you. Stumac sends you a set of what's called generic strings. Oh, there's your other set of strings. Uh, I guess they're crappy strings. It doesn't sound as good. Um, but anyway, once you've got the tuners in place and the bridge in place, take the neck, uh, use your clamp, put the neck in the, in the pocket, and then um, take the high E and the low E and string them. Don't don't get them up to tension. But what you're doing is making sure that the neck is straight. You know, are the strings, you know, are they falling off the edge of the of the neck? If so, it's probably crooked. Are they, you know, does the high E does it veer off into the middle of the neck or something? I don't know. Just it's it's a line. So what you're doing is making sure that the 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 bridge and the nut are straight. It's, it's pretty straightforward, um, but if you don't do it, you're going to have a lot of problems. So, once you do that, you're ready to start uh, drilling holes. Now, when you attach the neck, like everything else in this process, you got to take your time, just be patient, go slow, make sure everything's right. Uh, if you have a drill press, use the drill press. Of course use the drill press, but I don't have a drill press. Uh, now, they recommend using a wooden block as a guide to keep it straight. Um, I ended up just doing what I believed was a 90 degree angle. Um, Stumac tells you to use one eighth inch drill bit, which I did. And they say to go 11 sixteenths of an inch in. I, I didn't measure that. I... I, and I didn't put the tape on the, on the drill like I tend to do because I didn't feel like it was possible for me to go all the way through. Um, but I made a mistake on the other side. So what happened was I, I drilled my holes. I was straight. I took my time. I was very cautious. Uh, and then I put the neck plate on and I very sternly and carefully put the screws in. Um, but I hadn't drilled deep enough on one of the holes. And it hadn't occurred to me that that would be a thing, but I had to go back and remove the screws and re-drill the hole, which I feel like is a great opportunity to make a mistake. It worked out just fine, um, but I, you know, I, I feel like that's a pretty strong argument for the tape. If I'd put tape around the, the drill bit like I generally do, I would have stopped at the right spot and I wouldn't have had to go back and redo my work. Okay. I think it's starting to look like a guitar. Next week, I'm going to install a four position uh, switch that's gonna give me some interesting pickup choices. I'm also gonna do a couple of interesting things with the wiring that I think you might uh, like. Uh, so I wanna thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope you're enjoying Learning Curve. If you are, please subscribe. Please share it with your friends. Please like it. Um, if you wanna follow me on Instagram, it's Learning Curve Guitars on Instagram. My name is Spencer Dobson. I hope you're being nice to each other. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Learning Curve.